Bard has gotten an upgrade. With the inclusion of a limited selection of extensions alongside some other improvements, it's potentially leapfrogged ahead of Bing Chat as the most feature-rich of the free, big tech-produced generative AI-based search tools. So what has been announced? Bard's model has been upgraded to a better tailored Palm 2 model. They have added extensions to Google's own products. Think ChatGPT's plugins for comparison. You can now share usable Bard chats between users. So if you share a chat, the person you share it with can pick it up and ask more related to that dialogue. And lastly, Bard is now connected to Google Search as a fact checker, meaning you can easily get Google Search responses related to your dialogue to double check whatever it is Bard has told you. In my initial testing of these new features in preparation for this video, it didn't really start out well for Bard. I initially turned on the extensions that don't require personal data access, everything except Google Workspace, and tried some requests that I've previously criticized Bard for missing, searching content on YouTube. First, it just wouldn't work. And then it did its normal thing of understanding what's on YouTube channels worse than Bing does. Let's jump over to a demo environment that I prepared specifically for this video using simulation data and then cross our fingers that we might actually be pleasantly surprised. So one of the first things I want to try here is in this release, Bard now has the capability to continue publicly shared chats. So I have a link here for a chat that I've started. And I'm just going to jump across here. So I started this chat uh, to tell me the differences between Bard and Bing chat. I do find this response kind of interesting because for data protection, it highlights that Google's privacy policy is generally considered to be more comprehensive and transparent than Microsoft's, which is interesting because I'm not really sure who it is who considers it to be generally more comprehensive and transparent, uh, but that's probably a topic for another video. But what I can do here now with this public link is I can continue this chat. So then you see this opens up in Bard um, and I can continue on where this left off. I'm going to ask it to provide some references on that point of Google's privacy policy being considered more comprehensive than Microsoft's. Interesting, I'll have to look up some of these references. And Google has given me an easy way to do that. So you see now we have a double check response icon on the bottom of the response. And what this allows me to do is to actually click on this and open up some um, related searches that goes through the responses here and finds me links that will help me to reference what's going on here. So you can see the first one it actually hasn't given me any reference for. Um, but if I click on this second one here, let's take a look. And Google didn't find relevant content. Let's see the Google search didn't find relevant content. I don't really know exactly what it would imply that this entire uh, response, uh, it can't even find the, the Verge article that it's referring to. So I just decided to go and try to work out whether these answers are correct myself. And I jumped over to the Verge website. I did a search for Google privacy policy. And in the first five pages of results, I can find no reference to an article from 2022 that compares the privacy policies of Microsoft, um, Google and Apple. So that isn't to say that this doesn't exist, but based on a few minutes of searching and based on Google's own um, checking of this, I would have to call BS on the entire response, which isn't a good start for um, for Bard. So I had a largely similar chat with Bing Chat Enterprise and I gave it two opportunities to call out that its uh, privacy policy is better than Google's in some way and neither time would it do this. It highlighted um, what appeared to be uh, referenced facts about what's going on because there are actual web links that you can go to there. Um, one of them 
is actually from The Verge. You can see that there is a, a comparison here, but that's not the comparison that um, Bard was referring to. Um, but on both occasions, uh, doing this chat, it makes clear that we should look into this more. So I have to say, just from the very start, I uh, trust the response that I'm getting from Bing considerably more than I trust the response that I'm getting from Bard. And even in the explanation of what you're looking at here, it isn't really clear because it implies that Google search found content that's likely different from the statement or didn't find relevant content, a link is provided if available. Well, I would say those those two things are very importantly different. I'm sure for other things it works just fine, but on this particular case, you can see what's happened. So jumping over to a fresh uh, chat with Bard, you can see that one of the things that's been added here is this extensions icon. And if we click on this, you can see that we've got a number of extensions and by default, the ones that don't require you to sign in um, are, are here and turned on. So let's go back and have a new chat and see what we can do with this. So I'm asking Bard to tell me through the YouTube extension, what are some of the most popular videos on Microsoft 365 right now? And you can see there are some uh, videos here that it's shown, but some of these are actually quite old. So I wonder whether I can get a better response. So I'm gonna ask it to show me the most popular videos published in the last month. So I'm fairly sure this is not published in the last month. Let's just go and check. And you can see this was published six months ago. So I would have to give Bard zero points on this. Let's start another chat. So I'm asking it to tell me where I can get into nature around Cincinnati today, to show me some locations I can visit and to suggest what activities I could do when I get there. And it does indeed show me some locations around town. So I'm gonna ask it to suggest some uh, routing for a Cincinnati to London trip in November. I want direct flights if possible, and I'm flexible in the length of my trip to want to minimize the ticket price. And there is a direct flight from Cincinnati to London, um, which is run by British Airways. So clearly it didn't find that. I'll give it one more try. Uh, and it's given me a very strange response where it's getting me there on November 6th, returning on November 8th. It's not giving a direct flight. Seems very expensive. It doesn't seem very uh, cost efficient. So let's see um, how we can take a look at this on Google Flights itself. And within just a couple of minutes, I have a direct flight here from Cincinnati arriving in London at 10 a.m. Um, it's g going there in November for a couple of weeks and I'm getting a round trip price of $685. So had I relied on what Bard was telling me, I would have spent potentially um, the best part of $2,000 that I didn't need to to um, make that flight. So back in Bard, let's uh, get it to give me some hotel recommendations. Now, I guess these are hotel recommendations. I wouldn't imagine that many people who are dropping $2,300 on a two-day return flight are then arriving at their destination and spending $21 a night on a hotel. Maybe we can ask Google to help us with this. So I'm gonna ask it to give some slightly more upscale offerings and to offer suggestions for different budgets. Now I am familiar with a couple of these hotels and uh, we have now gone to completely the other end of the spectrum here. So jumping back to the extensions, we are now going to turn on the big one, uh, Gmail Drive and Docs. And this is the only one that isn't turned on by default because it requires your authorization to do so. So it's gonna have access to manage your items in Google Workspace, your emails and your documents, and share parts of your conversation with Google Workspace. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect this. And now this is turned on. And if I jump over to this Google account, you can see that in here I've got a whole bunch of um, information that's just been created specifically for this demo. Um, and I've got a couple of emails here that have been um, 
created specifically for this demo. So let's jump back over into Bard. And first of all, I'm going to ask it to give me a summary of my recent emails. So let's see what we can do here. Can we get it to set up the meeting with Megan on Tuesday? So the answer to that is no. Uh, right now, it doesn't have the ability to do anything other than answer questions. And if we scroll back up here, um, you can see that I do actually have the ability to jump straight across to Gmail into the email thread that it's referencing. So that is quite useful, but it doesn't have that extra touch that we saw from the demo of Microsoft um, Copilot last week. So let's see what else we can do here. So I'm gonna ask it to give me a summary of any meeting minutes from last week. And it can't find any meeting minutes from last week in your Gmail or Google Drive. So let's jump over to Drive, you can see I have meeting minutes here from 9.22, that is last week. And if I open that up, you can see there is content here. So let us be more specific. And it says there is no information about the Green Tech meeting on 9.22. Jump back over here, there is a Green Tech meeting on 9.22. I'm gonna ask, are there any minutes for meetings on my Google Drive and it completely misses that there is a document with meeting minutes in there. Now if I jump over to Drive and I search for meeting minutes, it immediately finds these meeting minutes. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit the like button and if you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you know the next time I release a video. Also, if there are people in your network who would enjoy content like this, please do consider sharing it there too. Thanks. So I have to say that this demo was a bit of a bust. I think the chat sharing feature is useful and I can see a use case for that. Conceptually, the checking of results with Google search is useful too. But if it can't find the references that actually relate to your search, it's confusing. I think ultimately I'm not sure why it isn't automatically fact checking itself and only presenting you with those responses that it can actually reference. I don't recall a situation where I've clicked on a reference link in Bing chat and not found the information that Bing is claiming. I'm not saying that it cannot happen, just that I haven't experienced it. Just leaving nonsense on screen is a weakness in my book, and it's pretty astonishing for Google to be completely unable to cite sources that are being referenced for Bard to talk itself up versus the competition. The extensions are a mixture in my book. I think the YouTube one is pretty useless, and I'm still amazed that Google has been unable to better integrate one of its most important properties with Bard in a way that gives you consistently accurate results. To ask for videos published in the last month and to get one published six months ago is just crazy. Surely they must internally test these features with these sorts of requests. And if not, Google, feel free to give me a call. I offer extremely competitive rates to near trillion dollar companies when testing their AI tools for them. The flights, maps and hotels things I could take or leave. Flights screwed up very clearly, maps and hotels did an okay job. I'm really not sure what the point of these tools are if they cannot give results consistently as good as just going to their website. It's just not convenient to get the wrong answer, and to me, the computer science complexity of turning natural language into a flight information request just is nothing compared to the other things we're trying to do now, like understanding prompts and turning them into images. So I don't really understand why this is so bad. And the workspace plugin? Absolutely useless. I can't even understand how it can be so useless. I, I mean, the email summary was fine. But searching for files? You couldn't rely on this for anything. And I'd be interested to see how this behaves with a more complex inbox. For both emails and files, I gave this the easiest possible scenario. Now, you may be looking at what I'm saying and thinking, well, Google does immediately point out that you can't rely on this for anything. And I, I get that point, but to release something as this is a tool that we want everyone to try, I would expect there to be 
a level of quality, a level of internal testing, um, a level of efficacy that's beyond what we're seeing here. Anyone who has a, a Google account can just go to the Bard website and they get these features. And so while I understand that Google isn't saying they're going to be right every time, I don't understand how they're getting to where they are and still being so bad. I've talked a lot here about the protection of your data and the difference in commitment a product like Bing Chat might have over more enterprise focused options like Bing Chat Enterprise or even Microsoft 365 Copilot. And considering Bard's failure in my first example, this is a topic that I want to circle back to. When you opt to flip the switch to give Bard access to your private information in your email and documents, what protections are you actually giving away? So just a little bit of a disclaimer here. I'm not a lawyer, so this isn't legal advice. This is based on my best understanding, having reviewed the terms of service and associated information for Bard and the other services that are out there. So Google Bard's privacy notice has a specific section on extensions. It essentially shows us that once data is shared between Bard and an extension, that Google essentially has carte blanche to maintain that data for as long as it necessarily needs to, to both fulfill the request and ultimately to improve its services. So really for as long as it likes. Right now, these tools are only communicating with Google's own services, and those also come under their general Google privacy policy. So if you look, for example, at the privacy standards related to Gmail, it's clear that Google has broad options to use your data to develop new services and serve new experiences, including ads already. So does Bard undercut your existing privacy? I don't really think so. Google's policies related to consumer data are already extremely permissive and Bard extensions does not change that in substance one way or the other. Is Bard's privacy policy more permissive in substance than Bing Chats? Yes and no. Bing Chats does not broadly apply across an ecosystem like Bard's does, but in substance the rights of Google and Microsoft related to these products are similar. However, if you turn on Bing Chat Enterprise, that's an entirely different story where Microsoft's data protections are then leaps and bounds ahead of Google's. So having looked at the new Bard capabilities, what's my takeaway? I still honestly just don't think Bard is that good compared to the competition. Yes, all of the major AI vendors have run into technical challenges at launch. Do you remember Bing Sydney, for example? But with Google releasing extensions for its own products and some of them just not working consistently or with no notification of why, is just poor. That said, with its extensions, Bard is doing something a little different. You have what are Copilot-like capabilities in Bard for free if you use Drive or Gmail. With Microsoft recently talking about a yet unspecified and unpriced Microsoft 365 Copilot for consumers, this may be the next frontier of the AI competition. Of people I work with, Microsoft 365 is considerably more prevalent for business communications, while Gmail is significantly more prevalent for personal communications. So following the normal logic that the differentiator for these products is access to the right data, it's possible that Bard could win out in the productivity space for life issues rather than work issues. Thanks for watching through to the end. I hope this video has been useful to you. Until the next one, bye bye.